please welcome Tony Abbott. Uh, look, uh, 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 my fellow Caucasians, uh, as you may know, uh, I am no longer the far right honourable Prime Minister of Australia. Uh, look, uh, that is a job. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I know not all of you voted for me. Uh, I understand that, uh, madam. Uh, but, uh, look, uh, no, that is a job which uh, has been reallocated to uh, my mate Malcolm. Uh, uh, no, look, Malcolm and I are good mates, uh, like Jesus and Judas. Uh, we uh, will be friends until the end. And uh, look, uh, he is a, uh, a good, good communications minister. Uh, he rolled out a fantastic uh, NBN, uh, the National Band Broad Network. And, uh, I will uh, talk about that uh, in greater detail a little bit uh, later on. Uh, I'll just move this microphone up. It seems to be on the cusp of, uh, of feedback, uh, something I'm not really a fan of. Uh, I'll just uh, put that there. This is not a focus group. Uh, you bet you are. Uh, you bet it's not. Uh, if I see a focus group, I will shirt front it. Uh, or send in these Chinook helicopters up on the roof. But uh, look, uh, it's not often that I come to these poorer suburbs, but uh, uh, I have made the effort uh, for you people and uh, for uh, the Green Left Weekly, a uh, fantastic uh, publication um, published by News Corp and uh, uh, lacks a sports section, but uh, <laughs> now look, uh, uh, it seems like only a month ago uh, I was out solving the big issue and uh, this month it seems like I will be selling the big issue. <laughs> look, uh, no, <laughs> no, uh, I have been given much fantastic support from friends and colleagues, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Bronwyn Bishop, uh, Madam Speaker, called me uh, on the telephone and uh, uh, she called me up and, uh, look, I'm not particularly good with uh, impersonations, but uh, she said to me, uh, she said, I don't know what it was she said, but uh, it sounded uplifting. Uh, tonight's debate is about Team Australia. Uh, it's about debating teams. And uh, tonight's subject, of course, is uh, should Team Australia be disqualified? Now, um, uh, gentlemen and ladies, um, as a, uh, uh, there we go, he's lighting up the dock over there right now. <laughs> Uh, can you all see me okay? Hey. All right, there we go. Nice to have some women in tonight as well. Uh, with a little bit of sex appeal. Uh, I'm sure your husbands can't wait to uh, get you home. So that you can uh, <laughs> uh, do the ironing. Now, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, should Team Australia be disqualified? Before we begin, I will ask you if you believe, yes, Team Australia should be disqualified. A big applause uh, right now.
all right, fair enough. Uh, uh, now, let's test the other sh sides, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Team Australia should not be disqualified. No. Let's hear you. All right, well, it seems like Team Now has their work cut out for them. So, uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies, if you don't mind, uh, a big round of applause uh, for all of our crossbenchers here tonight as they make their way to the uh, stage. <laughs> gentlemen and ladies, a big round of applause for your first team captain for the evening, Mr. Michael Hing. Good evening. Earnest pinko socialist types and anarchists who have come along to heckle. Sorry, what? It was as good the second time. Were you saying fuck that to civility or fuck that to them? <laughs> All right. Who would have thought that people arguing against Team Australia would be heckled at a Green Left weekly function? But here we are. <laughs> The topic tonight is that Team Australia should be disqualified. So what is Team Australia? I mean, sure, it's a nationalist lie dreamt up by a government who were equal parts fascist and incompetent, a lie predicated on the assumption that those in power have the right to divide ordinary people into arbitrary categories based on base, misguided and indefensible nativist instincts. Yes, it is all of those things. But let's go deeper because we aren't disqualifying a concept tonight. We are disqualifying Team Australia who are people. And frankly, I think it's insane that this is being adjudicated by Tony Abbott. That is incredibly unfair. And if we lose tonight, I will be protesting that and lodging a complaint with the Green Left Weekly. <laughs> Tony Abbott himself described Team Australia as people who are supportive of the government's Australian values. And these are arbitrarily decided upon Australian values. So it's basically, we're talking about conservative values, aren't we? We're talking about people who are interested in defending racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, corporate wealth, white supremacy, and frankly, I really look forward to the opposition's strident defense of these values in front of this crowd. <laughs> and what do we mean by disqualified? How far can we stretch this analogy? I mean, when you disqualify, what are we disqualifying these people from? Our second speaker, Kirsty Mack, we're we talking about how Team Australia should be disqualified for being drug cheats. And our special guest, former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, will be desperately trying to remain relevant. <laughs> Before we get too deeply into this, I can imagine that these, you know, look at them, the bunch of corporate fascists they are over here on my left. Uh, and they're going to be criticising us and saying, look, obviously, these three um, social outcasts don't feel part of Team Australia, and so that's why they are anti-Team Australia. There are a couple of ways in which people can be disqualified uh, from a race. Obviously, drug cheating is one, but let's look at cheating more broadly, shall we? Because cheating is gaining an advantage by kind of, you know, ill-gotten means, isn't it? It's an unfair advantage, and I think there is no greater example of Team Australia and getting them something they don't deserve than white privilege, right? Because recently I've been thinking a lot about whether or not it would be better for me to be white. And there are some advantages to being white. Um, you can complain at restaurants without people thinking you're strident or rude, you know? If I complain at restaurants, people are like, oh, mainlanders, you know? It's very <laughs> dense with racism. You know, I can talk about race in a way that maybe people might find white people a bit awkward to do it, you know? Don't get me wrong, white people will give it a fucking go, you know what I mean? They will give it a crack, you know? Uh, whenever you start a new job in Australia, basically what you're doing is you're just counting down the two weeks until the white people at your workplace are comfortable enough to say something fuck to you and then say it's a joke. That's all you're doing, just two weeks. And they're like, ah, he can't drive, <laughs> I'm like, what is that? Like, it's just the bloody Australian way. Hey, it's just the bloody, we're just having a joke. It's the bloody Australian way. Yeah, because Australia's a pack of fucking racists. <laughs> I think the other way that people can kind of get disqualified, in my experience, is by not registering properly for the competition. And I think we, if we all look back into the history of Australia, there is absolutely no doubt that Australia did not register properly in this competition, you know? <laughs> all right, I'm done. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, well, uh, 
somebody who is as gorgeous as uh, one of my not bad looking daughters uh, is the team captain advocating no for tonight. Uh, no, it's not the death cult. Good. Uh, uh, now, this uh, lovely lady uh, has uh, been and done much. Uh, she has uh, been on a rational fair, uh, has been to Cambridge University. I went to Oxford. Uh, I boxed uh, and played rugby. Uh, she's also written for the publicly funded uh, broadcaster SBS. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome, advocating the no, Alice Fraser. Hello, everybody. Are you well? Hey, good. Ever since I was told last week which side of the argument I was being asked to argue, I believe very strongly that Team Australia should not be disqualified. Let's start with a statement, Team Australia should be disqualified. First, I object to the terms of the debate. Uh, calling us Team Australia implies that what we are in is a game. It's like saying, don't hate the player, hate the game. I don't hate either the player or the game, I hate the people who think it's a game, and that's one that we're playing. But if we accept that this is in fact a game, the idea that we should disqualify teams or opinions just because we don't agree with them, I think is a dangerous one. Also, Let's proceed on the premise that it is a game. If it is a game, let's gamify this shit. If we can convince people that it is as fun a game to spend 1.5 seconds deciding who gets to be physically inside them tonight, surely we can expand that to our country. Let's gamify immigration. <laughs> come on, like he's got kind eyes, he can come in. She likes long walks on the beach, very Australian, she can come in. Uh, they look like my abusive ex. Go back to where you came from. At least if it's a game, if it is a game, which is a horrifyingly trivialising but totally fun way to think about international politics and the complicated question of how far we compromise our national wealth security and status quo in order to save other people's human lives. On the bright side, if we do gamify it, if we really accept the premise of Team Australia, we might convincingly get some civic engagement. <laughs> Michael Hing says we're disqualifying Team Australia from society. Carlo Sands and Shane Hunter will be desperately trying to rewrite the speeches they wrote for the affirmative as they go. <laughs> and I will be talking about uh, this whole debate, really. To put my cards on the table, um, my Hungarian Jewish grandmother came out to Australia after the 1939 gritty World War I re reboot, World War II, World War's back and now it's personal. Uh, <laughs> She came out on a boat uh, with dodgy papers that were acquired under mysterious circumstances and she caught the boat over from Italy, which she walked to from Hungary uh, with her pet dog in her backpack because animals are cute. Uh, she was ahead of the cat video curve. But my granny was very pleased to become Australian in the same way that as a Jewish Holocaust survivor she was weirdly keen on Christmas and Easter. My childhood Christmases were marked by her showing up in a beard and hat fully dressed as Santa. For a long time, I thought Santa had a Hungarian accent and was a woman. It was made more confusing by the fact that my immediate family, my mum and dad, are practicing Buddhists, so we didn't really acknowledge Christmas. Uh, so the Christmas season appeared one summer morning uh, every year when someone dressed for winter would show up in our garden with presents and tell us she'd parked her reindeer around the corner. <laughs> that was awesome. To return to the debate, I think we sort of tend to fall along two lines with this nationalism debate. When it appears in the media or in people's discussion, you get either borderline racism cloaked in parochial nationalism of the type most people believe is exemplified by the phrase Team Australia, but which our team will be arguing is not, or this kind of faux naive bemusement about why anyone would object to mass immigration as though states and individuals don't regularly and unblinkingly accept huge quantities of bulk bargain bin human suffering in the pursuit of political or personal ends. Right? Is that a good summation of the debate? 
And uh, many news sources and lazy thinkers have gone away for a long time with characterising ref refugees, illegal immigrants, migrant threats and the yellow peril as a wave, like, you know, it's fluid rather than people, you know, that we were facing a tsunami of, of immigration or, uh, you know, as I like to call it, a human tsunami or humnami. <laughs> but... <laughs> Thank you. There's some people who just applaud puns here, which is good. The argument that, you know, for Team Australia is that if you could get our average Australian to care about national politics with the enthusiasm that they deploy for a Collingwood game, we might have a shot at a politically engaged democracy, a vested interest in Australia's performance on the national and international stage. Like, can you just imagine, like, imagine a world where you have a family sitting around in golden green scarves watching a UN general meeting, eating hot chips and shouting, you're blind, Ban Ki-moon, fucking Switzerland. <laughs> I'm not a big sports fan, but even I know that teams go through good phases and bad phases. There are times when the Wallabies are up and times when the Wallabies are down. Also the rugby team, the Wallabies, goes through phases. <laughs> I'm saying let's not disqualify Team Australia. Let's red card the people who are fucking with the rules, work on our ball handling skills and bring in some new blood. Then we might genuinely be a team worth barracking for. Well, very good. So far, so good. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, it's time to bring our very next debater to the uh, stage. Uh, another lady, uh, another woman uh, coming to the stage. Uh, now, this, this lady, uh, this, this female, uh, uh, has uh, her own television program uh, called The F Word. Um, I don't know what it is, but um, look, I've come all the way from Warringah to be here tonight. Uh, uh, Warringah is an Aboriginal word, meaning safe seat. Uh, <laughs> I hope. Uh, uh, this lady, I've, had, uh, I've appeared on her show uh, at one time before. Um, She's also had her own live shows called uh, uh, Feminazi. Um, obviously not a fan of that sort of thing. Uh, that's, that's fine, madam. Um, also, uh, to any Italian people in tonight, uh, uh, I say, uh, Buono Corplian. <laughs> All right, it's getting a little bit multicultural in here now. <laughs> So let's just uh, bring our next debater to the stage before uh, we all get confused. Uh, uh, namely me. Uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies, a big round of applause for your next debater over here at the Yes Team, Kirsty Mack. <laughs> uh, how's it going? All right, um, so uh, Team Australia uh, should definitely be disqualified. So basically, Team Australia is the rest of the Liberal Party, global corporations, the Catholic Church and Uncle Rupert. They are the main people in Team Australia. Now, um, I have come with some breaking news for everybody tonight. Now, a lot of you may think that Tony Abbott was ousted because of bad polls, but Actually, what happened was Team Australia were all drug tested. And uh, what they found was that in the urine of all of Team Australia, namely their team captain, uh, they found quite a lot of illicit drugs. Um, the first one was xenophobia which is known to be a mind-altering substance, uh, racism, which is an amphetamine that uh, we all know helps induce stupidity. Sexism, which is known to have an effect on one's libido, and um, I mean, seriously, Julia couldn't run the country because she had her period, and I'm pretty sure Tones couldn't run the country because his ball sack was full. <laughs> Finally, um, the most concerning performance-enhancing drug that they found was white male privilege. And uh, that shit is just crack for entitlement. <laughs> 
Of course, Julia Gillard wasn't picked for Team Australia uh, because the team was picked on International Women's Day that was in a men's only club. So obviously she couldn't attend on that day. Now, when she inquired about why she was not on Team Australia, the Murdoch Press said that it was because she played the gender card. Yeah, the gender card, that's right, the gender card, like that's a golden card to play. <laughs> like it's not a draw for, it's a skip at best. And what did it skip? A man's turn. How about a fucking reverse card then? Um, <laughs> well, let's just stop this game of you know, because clear to clearly Tones doesn't know anything. Um, but uh, he did let one woman into Team Australia, the woman who had a little bit of sex appeal. Um, she was let in, and uh, then Mark Latham chimed in and said she wasn't even that sexy. Like, imagine being assessed by the two biggest mingers in politics. <laughs> Like, if you want to talk about sex appeal, let's talk about sex appeal. Tony Abbott makes my vagina close over. Uh, seriously, I just take one look at that guy and uh, my vagina closes up like a Ziploc bag. So all these drugs have a trickled into the water supply and are affecting the community at large. I mean, we, we can take an educated guess that the Liberal Party drugs mostly um, just because of their name, like you would have to be on drugs to call your team Reclaim Australia, because mate, it's not yours to reclaim. <laughs> it's clear that Team Australia have been on drugs. And uh, like the time Uncle Rupert Murdoch um, got onto Twitter, but he can't spell. He couldn't spell Muslims. The guy owns words. Uh, he owns words and he can't spell. But my mum always told me to find the best in people. So uh, everybody was having a go at Rupert. So I, I, I did find the best in Rupert. And I think the best part about Rupert is that he's 84. <laughs> The average life expectancy of a man in Australia is 79. And uh, my favourite colour is I hope he dies. Another time Team in Australia were clearly on drugs was when they were claiming that they won the war on terror. <laughs> I mean, there's been a lot of talk about virgins in all of this. Apparently there's 72 guys that are going to paradise to be met with 72 virgins, which is a lot of hymen to get through. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so even uh, our Minister for Winking, Tony Abbott, says that virginity is a very precious gift. Uh, well, I no longer have my virginity, but I still do have the little gift box that it came in. In ending, Team Australia was pretty much disqualified when it became clear that the captain was on the most drugs. And as we all know, the trickle-down theory of economics definitely works. So then Team Australia must all be on drugs. And that's the end of my bit. Thank you. Nice job. <laughs> uh, another round of applause for the uh, uh, lady, Kirsty Mack, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, boy, it's very hot in here. Who put the air conditioning in? Labor? <laughs> Peter Garrett, are you up there? <laughs> Um, all right, it's time for us to uh, bring up our next uh, act. Uh, it doesn't get any more hippie than this. Um, he's a writer for the Green Left Weekly, a uh, writer for the Un-Australian uh, satirical newspaper, and has the least amount of News Corp shares out of all of us. Uh, could you please put your hands together and make welcome to the stage, Carlo Sands. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Tony. I just wanted to say, Tony, actually, that as far as I'm concerned, you're still captain of my team, Australia, mate. <laughs> but just a suggestion for next time. Ask Kevin about that. <laughs> I'm sure we all appreciated your efforts in protecting the borders of Melbourne with your border force thing. If you really want to catch all the visa violators in Melbourne, the trick, just invite Liverpool FC back to the MCG. Then, 
They arrest the 90,000 English visa violators who rock up. Just lock the gates, you got a ready-made detention centre. <laughs> now you'll note what I did there. I made a suggestion to improve Team Australia, make it a bit better. Unlike the negative naysaying arguments we're hearing from the traders over here, <laughs> who, if Tony was still in charge, would have already had their citizenship stripped. <laughs> and I'm going to address the elephant in the room. What the hell is Kevin Rudd doing on that team? <laughs> Twice captain of Team Australia? I am sorry. I am sorry. But I will not be lectured on the crimes of Team Australia by that man. I... <laughs> not now or ever. I'm not convinced I've thought this through. The consequences of disqualifying Team Australia. What about the economy? Not the Australian economy, the Cayman Islands economy. <laughs> Heartless bastards. <laughs> Team Australia has been responsible. I don't think we get enough credit for this. We've actually been responsible for some quite incredible cultural achievements. I'm thinking here of some of our great works of fiction, such as Sydney's bus timetables. <laughs> They really got to win a Nobel Prize for Literature as one of the all-time great works of absurdism. <laughs> Fuck waiting for Godot, try waiting for a 413. We also have some truly unique contributions, and I don't, we don't recognise this enough, because sure, plenty, plenty of nations out there, they've got their billionaire mining magnates, Gina Reinhart and Clive Palmer, right? It's famous, like Gina Reinhardt's poem, Our Future, that made headlines right around the world. It did. For example, the London Telegraph said about it, Gina Reinhardt pens world's worst poem. <laughs> Which just goes to show how jealous the other teams are. I believe, truly believe that Clive Palmer, for example, is probably the greatest specimen that really he sums up all that is good in Team Australia. Now, he doesn't just give us a holiday resort on the Gold Coast. No. He gives us a holiday resort on the Gold Coast with giant robotic dinosaurs. <laughs> that these people, these people, I can't actually quite believe, they want to disqualify the one team, the one team, not just on planet Earth, but in the known universe. <laughs> with giant robotic dinosaurs. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> they laugh at Clive. Other teams say, other nations, they laugh at Clive. They said, for example, and he said he wanted to rebuild the Titanic. Some people around the world said, mate, you want to rebuild a ship that sunk 100 years ago in the worst maritime disaster in human history, killed more than a thousand people, and you want to turn that into a tourist attraction? What the fuck are you smoking? He's got the Team Australia vision. He's ahead of the curve. He, Clive understands, once global warming mounts all the ice, <laughs> he's got an unsinkable ship. <laughs> What's more, what is more, at the same time, rising sea levels, you're going to have large numbers of desperate people. They're not going to be laughing then. They're not laughing then. They'll be begging Clive for a spot on that ship. They'll be begging him. And do you know the first question Clive Palmer will ask? Are you part of Team Australia? <laughs> They're fucked. <laughs> and when the time comes to vote to disqualify or keep Team Australia, I hope you vote for common sense and for your own future. Thank you. Uh. Uh, now it is time for me to bring to the stage uh, an old rival of mine, uh, a man who uh, I owe so much to, uh, primarily my Prime Ministership. Uh, a man whose uh, name is synonymous with the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd years. Uh, a 
a man whose tie is uh, more red than your communist tablecloths tonight. Um, a man who uh, the Daily Telegraph once asked, does this guy ever shut up? <laughs> well, I suppose we're about to find out. Gentlemen and ladies, uh, please make welcome to the stage and Lenten, my old rival, Mr. Kevin Rudd. Well, uh, thank you very much, Tony. And, uh, and uh, if I might just begin by expressing my sympathies to you, mate, for the events of September last. There can be no viler, no more disgraceful act of treachery in Australian political history than the assassination of a first-term Prime Minister in the middle of his first term. You weren't just assassinated, you were torn down. Leak after leak after leak was used to sabotage this government. I have never leaked, I have never condoned leaking. Leaking is the coward's way out. Tony, you were betrayed by someone whom you believed was a loyal deputy. For a loyal deputy to turn upon a Prime Minister with whom she, and it is always a she, <laughs> has done so much and gone through so much is an act of political bastardry for which we can never forgive. You lead your life in Christ's image just as Christ dined with the tax collectors and the prostitutes and the other sinners, so you have dined with Kathy Jackson and Gina Reinhardt. <laughs> Tony, now is the time to dig deep and find that most powerful of Christ's message, the message of forgiveness. I know how tempting it can be to seek out retribution and revenge, but Tony, trust me, if you do the noble thing, if you forgive and forget, if you retire and to the backbenches and give your new leader your unqualified support, just as I did, <laughs> you may yet come back. <laughs> In recent years and recent months, and it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when it happened, but let's just say it happened in June 2010, Australia has been engulfed in a toxic culture. A culture which holds in contempt our political history and conventions. It holds in contempt the Australian people. The cannibalism of first-term Prime Ministers, democratically elected by the Australian people. Tony, you were not elected by the faceless men of the Liberal Party. You were elected by the Australian people. <laughs> if we allow this culture to continue unheeded, then Australia's reputation on the international stage will plummet and plummet and plummet. It is for these reasons Team Australia must, if not be disqualified indefinitely, be removed from the current front bench. <laughs> Alice Fraser, you mentioned Ban Ki-moon. Let me tell you, Ban Ki-moon is a friend of mine. We have worked together on literally thousands of occasions. And let me tell you, he is absolutely disgusted with this revolving door leadership that is currently engulfing the Australian people. The only thing which I can imagine would disgust him even more is your sordid invocation of his name to serve your petty political causes. Shame, Fraser, shame. <laughs> In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Australia is off course. The longer we are allowed to continue to compete in this great game we call global politics, the longer we will continue to cause harm to
to foster sentiments of mistrust and insecurity. And until we can find a different leadership, perhaps a more experienced leadership, <laughs> perhaps someone who has seen the problem and the damage it can cause firsthand, we have no choice but to disqualify it. And having settled that, folks, I've got a zip. Thank you. <laughs> It's time for us to bring to the uh, lectern our final speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could you please make welcome to the stage uh, Mr Shane Hunter for the No Team. Thank you. It's great to be here. I, uh, yeah, fantastic turnout. Uh, it's, uh, this is the second largest uh, audience I've uh, spoken in front of since uh, uh, doing Reclaim Australia. I think it's very interesting how we are always recognise uh, the traditional owners of the land, but they never get to have the land. <laughs> you know, it would be like if like one day you come home to your house and the door's locked and you look in and you just see me sitting in there eating a cereal and you're like, dude, what are you doing in my house? And I was like, well, I recognise that you're the traditional owner of your house. But it's mine now, so uh, enjoy the park, and uh, and don't worry. Every six months, you get your own show on SBS. So uh, you know it all kind of balances out there. So uh, you know it's one of the reasons I'm for Team Australia. The reason I think we should support Team Australia is we really need to defend our borders uh, from refugees. I think uh, I mean uh, queue jumpers. I think we really need to stop those queue jumpers. You know coming here because there's a big difference between us culturally. That's just incompatible between Australians and uh, Q jumpers, boat people. And that is, they haven't watched season one to five of MasterChef. <laughs> and you just can't come in mid-season, mate. You just can't come in mid-season. You'll be asking questions, oh, why did Cheryl get voted out? Oh, it's just it's too much. In the prison, in the prison. So uh, again, Team Australia, thanks for that, defending us. You know, and, uh, and a lot of these boat people are Muslims. And uh, we all know Muslims are evil. Um, you know, like uh, a lot of Muslims, they want to come here and impose uh, their laws, Sharia law. They want to come here and impose their law on the native population. <laughs> and that's just un-Australian, mate, all right? And what, one of the great things about our political system is you get to vote with your dollars, do you know what I mean? And like, 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 think about how functional our system is. We have people like Clive Palmer, who had billboards without any kind of political message or rhetoric, other than just a billboard of himself, just smiling. And I think that's amazing that we can have that. Just, just like he had no message other than just that's the Clive Palmer party. He actually named the party after himself, and he got in. I think that's amazing. Essentially, we have a Pokemon in power <laughs> that can only say his own name. And I think that's a, that's a, great, uh, that's a great thing about Australia, you know. Uh, Clive Palmer party, authorised by Clive Palmer for the Clive Palmer, for the Clive Palmer Initiative. <laughs> and the good thing about capitalism in Australia, we live in a capitalist society, and I think that's great, do you know what I mean? Because, you know, more and more as we sell off public assets, we get to enjoy more and more advertising everywhere we go. You may have noticed, more and more bus stops are covered with advertisement, which is great that we're able to commodify your experience of waiting for the bus into something that can be traded on the stock market. I think that's fantastic. You know, we now have advertisement on the back of toilet doors. That used to just be a, a door just covered with like penises and, you know, Jono, cool Jono, like, which is fantastic. I look forward to capitalism continually uh, finding new and new markets everywhere we go. Uh, new opportunities for advertisement, you know, you know, instead of glory holes, you know, you go there to, you know, have anonymous sex with a stranger. I think those days are past us and really the next time you kneel down at a glory hole, you know, we can have a Cornetto ice cream come through or a Coca-Cola straw, you know. There's just a lot of opportunities for product placement that are being wasted, I think, that we can look forward to in Australia. Um, 
And, uh, and you know, we, let's face it, essentially uh, Australia uh, benefits from, uh, uh, from uh, put, pushing down the rest of the brownies in all other parts of the world. And, uh, and it's good because more and more we're able to um, export manufacturing to people that um, will accept uh, a cent an hour, which is great. And, um, and obviously we need wars to be able to make sure that happens, that there's poor people to, for their labour to be exploited. Uh, and, and what I think a, a Team Australia will actually provide people is eventually, now with drone strikes and drone technology, we can actually export um, uh, those jobs, just like we have in call centres, to our poor people that can actually pilot drone strikes and bomb themselves. I think that's a fantastic opportunity that will really save a lot of money. And the good thing is, if you don't like what I've said today, uh, your opinion really doesn't matter because you're all poor and uh, go fuck yourselves. Thank you very much. All right, well, um, uh, gentlemen uh, and ladies, uh, we have heard from uh, all fighters on both sides of the argument. Now, uh, before our final summation for tonight, I wanted to remind you of the good work uh, my government did uh, when I was leader. Uh, uh, when I was Prime Minister-elect, I got busy. I was out uh, back burning and driving the fire truck around. Uh, and then when I became Prime Minister, I, uh, I got even busier. 2014 rolled along and uh, uh, we hosted the uh, T20 Summit in Brisbane, uh, uh, where I had the honour of meeting uh, all the economic minds of the world. Uh, Tupac Obama and uh, the British leader James Cameron. And uh, in fact, that's one of his helicopters from a movie now. Um, and of course, uh, uh, the leader of Canada. Uh, Canada. Uh, now, uh, as I said before, we rolled out the uh, National Band Broad Network. Uh, this was a wonderful network. Uh, don't worry about the previous government's fibre optical illusion network. Um, it was all a myth, it was all magic, and it was all science. And uh, <laughs> cannot be replicated in a controlled, independent church. But it was, uh, it's a fantastic copper, sorry, I was buffering. Um, um, uh, now, of course, there was that. Um, we had to make the tough decisions. For you people, uh, there are some people who still believe the world is round. Um, it is not. Uh, there are some people who don't even realise that solar panels are stealing the sun's energy. That's less sunlight for beachgoers and swimmers and surfers and uh, members of Warringah. Um, uh, also, uh, we created, or we're about to create, one million new jobs. Uh, now, granted, to create one million new jobs, we had to shed uh, quite a lot of jobs uh, from out there. But you cannot make an omelette without breaking some other omelettes. Um, uh, that's, that's my opinion. Um, if you want to find out more, you can send my office a fax and uh, my women will get back to you. Now, it's time for the uh, final summation for tonight. Um, we've got uh, people we've heard from both sides, um, the debaters and, uh, and the women ones as well. <laughs> uh, uh, we will bring up uh, to the stage, uh, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the captain of Team Yes, Michael Hing. Thank you, Tony. Uh, all right, so this is a moment where I sort of 
uh, run through what we've gone through tonight. Alice uh, came up and mostly complained about the terms of the debate. Uh, she was a real Lincoln Chafee, hey? No, that's fine. Uh, that's a uh, reference to the recent Democratic National Convention debate that happened in Las Vegas, and one of the guys complained about the rules. It's a good reference. Then she then implored us to think about Australian politics more like AFL and said, wouldn't it be better if um, Australian politics was appreciated more on the scale of the AFL? And I just don't think we can cope with that many sex scandals in our Australian politics. <laughs> we then followed up with uh, KMAC, who came up and said that white privilege is crack for entitlement, a very true statement. She also said that Tony Abbott makes my vagina close over. And never a more relevant debate statement was made, ladies and gentlemen. That's clearly very relevant. Uh, she also said that the captain was uh, on the most drugs and the trickle-down economics works, which was confusing because it was like we know it doesn't work, but it kind of did. Uh, but I, it was an analogy. Hmm? I'm on your team. She's on my team. All right. <laughs> And then we heard from one of these long-haired hippies, fascist hippies, uh, about Clive Palmer and dinosaurs. And the main argument for Carlos Sands seemed to be that we should embrace Team Australia because Clive Palmer had a park full of robot dinosaurs. And two things on that. Number one, we all love the idea of a park of robot dinosaurs, but none of us ever actually have visited the park of robot dinosaurs have. And if we truly valued it, I think we would spend more time there. The other thing is, I don't think the dinosaurs are actually robotic, are they? They just sort of, they're all oh, animatronic, but yeah, sorry, I'm not, yeah, I'm not making an animatronic versus robotic argument, but they didn't, didn't one of them get burnt down anyway? Rupert Murdoch did it. Rupert Murdoch, okay. They're claiming now that Rupert Murdoch burnt down Clive Palmer's animatronic. Who are you booing, madam? Oh, you're booing Murdoch, right, okay. <laughs> like, boo, this actor. Well, oh, I'm done, no, it's fine. <laughs> Kevin Rudd implored Tony Abbott to be a better person. Again, very relevant. And finally, uh, Shane said that we can't relate. He, he implored the, he used the power of sarcasm to say that we can't relate to immigrants and that we should therefore um, uh, not let them in to Team Australia. Uh, Shane made a lot of very sarcastic points, which I think if you listen to the nuance of, really supported our case. So really, it's been a four-on-two debate. I really strongly suggest you support this motion that Team Australia should be disqualified. Cheers. Uh, now it's time for the advocate for the... Uh, no. Uh, uh, has the lights gone up or have we been here that long that dawn has broken? Uh, It's not Anzac Day, uh, you can turn them back down if you like. Um, all right. Um, uh, you've, you've heard from her before, uh, the female captain uh, for the no side, the uh, gentleman. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I haven't blacked out like that since I was surfing at Queenscliff. Uh, or North Stain or Piss Stain, I get them all mixed up now. Uh, but. Let's not drag it down to that level. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome to the stage, Electon, one more time, Alice Fraser. Thank you very much, Tony. As, as a woman, I do find it difficult to engage in political debate. Mainly, I just assume we have other people to represent our interests. <laughs> have a, a, a minister or something. Uh, in this debate, we watched Michael Hing argue that Team Australia stands for white power, which is a horrible thing to say about anything other than washing powder. Uh, Kirsty Mack argued that sexism, xenophobia and racism are performance-enhancing drugs, which uh, Michael Hing already rebutted for me. Good work. Uh, and Kevin Rudd, if that is your real name, took his valuable time on stage to either air some personal grievances or do base pandering to a biased audience, depending on whether we're pretending that these people are comedians in a wig or not. <laughs> uh, which uh, brings me to uh, the main point of our argument. Uh, let's exclude Shane Hunter, otherwise known as the saboteur, uh, <laughs> from this argument. 
uh, that part of the problem of modern discourse is we're not actually talking to the opposition. We're trying to disqualify them. Uh, we, we call them stupid and monstrous and meaningless. And really, they are just people with different opinions. I think the real question of tonight's debate is not whether a Team Australia should be disqualified or whether Team, team Australia should be disqualified, should be disqualified. <laughs> I think the real question should be whether the organising team of the Team Australia should be disqualified debate should be disqualified. <laughs> I feel from the outset that this debate has been rigged. They told us this was a debate. It's a pantomime. It's a pantomime with teams competing to be servile parasites regurgitating crowd-pleasing opinions to a well-worn audience who've heard it all before. Your open baby bird mouths were puking into them. Thank you. I feel that you've all agreed before the debate even began on your partisan opinion. Uh, you displayed the very closed-minded parochialism you purport to reject. And I've had enough. It's a wig. It's a wig. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your night. All right. Well, who wins? <laughs> who loses? It's time to announce uh, the winner. Uh, the winner for tonight is not any one team. The winner is both teams and all of you for coming here tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs>